As a physician, what is it that 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 you've seen and that you appreciate and that you would like to share about the patient responses to psilocybin? Oh. Any specific uh, cases come to mind? I mean, I I really haven't had the luxury of using this in treatment. Just like I said, I was I heard cases from the psilocybin research team at NYU, they would present their material of the cases that they were, uh, patients they were treating in their study with cancer. It was uh, just the, you know, the same things that you, you, everyone knows. These are patients who are racked with this sort of trauma of a, like the end is near potentially. And so it's kind of a reckoning. And sometimes you can get stuck in the, in the depression, the uh, demoralization, the hopelessness uh, and any old trauma that you haven't resolved in your childhood or other stages of life, uh, those can kind of become come back with a vengeance and, you know, just a sense of um, meaninglessness and hopelessness and wish for hasten death, wish for just, you know, ending it all. And just there's no purpose, even though, you know, you might that might not there's there's avenues that might be available for therapy, for care, and that there's ways that things can be healed. But you can be so overwhelmed with those feelings. And um, so I think what I would hear about is that patients who would then uh, go through, work with therapists, have a preparation, set some intentions and have a psilocybin session guided. There would be these amazing mystical experiences that they would uh, go through um, a series of life reviews, feelings of dissolving entirely and really having a sense of complete closure or of, of the life course itself. And, and then after, and then experiencing reverie and uh, bliss, um, timelessness, uh, ineffable sense of deep knowing, uh, sometimes an abiding sense of love, like through their whole body. I mean, just very profound experiences uh, with music and eye shades and, and support and safety. And that just, it just, it just stays with them. It's, it goes on for hours. And then it stays and it stays and it stays and it just sort of starts to trickle into their sense of their, you know, their life and what's important to them. Um, and, you know, they just, there's like a, a transformative experience that's happening with these patients that uh, I did, I heard one patient that um, spoke at a conference that I spoke at um, uh, a number of years ago who, who was a can, uh, kidney cancer survivor who went to Hopkins to do the cancer study that they did. And he, he was a therapist and he talked about like serious uh, unwinding of issues that he'd been struggling with for years and years and years that was able to get resolved that day and with his follow-up sessions. And, you know, um, cancer kind of became like a, it, d it did not take over his life anymore. It was no longer, it was part of this larger pattern of, of care. And, you know, I think he was, he was, he was doing okay. He had survived the cancer at this point. And, um, it was it was really about around what he needed to live, um, and 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 you know to, to reconnect. So that that's what I've seen and heard. Um, you know, with with psilocybin um, patients with, who who have cancer, these, these significant transformative experiences. I've seen it also with ketamine in, in some of my patients who have advanced cancer that I've treated. Um, I had a, a patient who was, um, you know, in his 60s who had come here from, from Maine, you know, to get therapeutic help with cancer, uh, pro advanced stage four prostate cancer. And he'd been also had significant developmental trauma. He was a, he'd worked with refugees and, and through the UN and, and Africa and had a lot of trauma around the wars that he'd seen there. Um, and uh, for him, the experience of having this psychedelic experience and um, support uh, it was around he he traveled the world and he had a vision of his own um, um, like a, a cream a cremation ground a very sacred cremation ground that he saw in um, India and the Ganges or he maybe he hadn't seen it he'd always envisioned it but he'd been close to it and it really became very clear and rich for him what it was like to uh, have this this uh, this uh, this celebration um, uh, and 
solemnness and beauty around his death, around his own death. And the, the, you know what it's like to be to be moved into the, to the river. You know that's that's the metaphor that's used in in, in in a lot of Indian rituals around dying. And and so that that's what that came to him. It was a be- he cried, and it was like a really joyous experience for him. Uh, he's now passed away, um, but he did experience significant changes in his level of bodily pain. That he he had severe bodily pain from the cancer, the tumors, the stress of all the worsening illness. Uh, it changed tremendously for him. He also used cannabis to alleviate that. He had used some opioids and he stopped using them. Um, and, you know, he, his mood entirely changed. He was more present. Anyway, I just, I feel like um, these kind of things are, are possible in cancer patients with this kind of medicine, be it psilocybin, ketamine, ayahuasca, like so many of these substances, they all have different features. Um, but their the common theme is this ability to reset the default mode network, really change the um, get you out of that hyper survival mode or even the extreme life threat mode and help you um, come safely into uh, another mode that is actually more pro um, healing, which is the kind of that social nervous system where you can have more connection. Um, and I think that's what they're doing. And, and, and with the support and guidance of doctors and therapists, um, they can feel more safe and, and there's more safety rails. And yeah, I think that's what's, that's in a nutshell what's happening. And, you know, and I should say, this is what happened with the amicus briefs is that we got the support of a whole medical institution, the Evergreen Health. It's like a two hospital, major hospice and palliative care system uh, and, and many other specialties in here in Washington. I, I trained it as a medical student. They said, yeah, you know, we support this, uh, this type of therapy for these kind of patients. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow,